My name is Angela, and um, I was molested as a little girl. That brought a lot of insecurities, uh, fears, growing up. Um, I just felt like I wasn't the same little girl anymore. I was very young when I got with my husband now. Um, we were 17 years old when we got together. There was just a lot of abuse emotionally, um, physically. I became a mom at a very, very young age. I remember my dad wanted me to stay as far away from as possible for him. And he said, you know, you just need to stay away from him. And he just didn't want me with him. He said that I was gonna suffer and I was gonna go through a lot of things that I didn't need to, that I didn't deserve. And um, I didn't listen. I still stayed with him after we lost our first child. I started drinking a lot. I started drinking like heavy. Sometimes I would wanna drink so much that it just kinda of just pass out um, and, and started smoking weed and things like that. The, the alcohol and, and, and smoking weed made it to where it was like, it just became something that was part of my life, just drinking and thinking that that's the way I was supposed to be. I got pregnant with my oldest child and um, I could say that that's where things really started. I, I remember being afraid. I remember wanting to go back home. I just didn't know how to. The abuse continued emotionally, um, physically. It, 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 it kind of got worse as, as we moved on. After I had my kids and I saw Adrian, I saw my husband and I saw who he was as a father, I knew that that's what I wanted for my children because the problem wasn't when he was sober. He was a good man when he was sober. It was when he was drunk. It was like he had anger. With the continuous use of, of alcohol, it affected, it affected the way I carried myself with my family. It affected how much time I was drinking and, um, and smoking and, and gambling and, and, uh, and I was neglecting my wife. I was neglecting my children. And, 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 and as, as I was drinking, they were worrying about me, whether I was gonna come home, whether I was gonna get in an accident, whether I was gonna be in jail. Um, they just didn't have peace as while I was drinking and while I was uh, smoking weed and doing all these things. Um, so that affected my marriage. It affected my mindset. I wasn't, I wasn't there sober. I wasn't a good father and my daughter left my home and it had a lot to do with how I was drinking and treating people while I was drinking. As I started coming to church, I would come by myself and I would picture myself um, with my family sitting in the pews, you know, picturing my husband and I with our children in church, you know, and I would say, I'm gonna have this one day. I'm going to come and all of us are gonna be in church. Genesis had asked us to be there with her for support for her, the passing of her friend. We went to the, the funeral and um, just the way that they held themselves after having such a great loss and being so sure and secure that they were gonna see their son again in heaven, you know, just touched me. It touched me as a mother and it touched me. I wanted that same feeling, you know? And so they did an altar call and they asked us if we wanted to give our life to Christ. And immediately, you know, without hesitation, I raised my hand. And as I was going up and they asked us to go up, I saw that my husband had raised his hand too. It came to a point where I had to surrender everything to God in order for him to really do something in my life. Every time I tried to make a decision or to make a change on my own, it wasn't, it wasn't working. So we both went together and we gave our life to Christ there. There's been no turning back since that day. That's when the, that's when the change came in my life. That's when my family became to, started to become more, become restored, is when that, when, when I started to, to stop making the, 
to stop making choices for myself and, and, and allow to be led by God and the Holy Spirit and things like that. That's when it, the true change in my life really came. Because I tried doing it on my way and it didn't, it didn't work. And so God gave me the strength and He delivered me. He freed me from my alcohol addictions, my, like my addictions to smoking weed. Like it's different now that I, I have a relationship with God and how the Holy Spirit fills me with such a, a feeling that any alcohol or any weed would, could do for me. I've been sober for two years now. I started like just wanting more and more. Um, I came to, to the prayer line. That's the first thing my husband and I, after we gave our life to Christ, was we came through the prayer line. And in my thought, I always said, you know, I'm gonna go to support my husband. Like he needs deliverance, he needs it. He's, he's the one that caused all this, so he's the one that needs it. But the deliverance was for me. Like as soon as I, I came up for prayer line, it, I started, you know, I'm the one who got delivered. I was the one that started, you know, that got set free. And so um, there was a lot of things that I was so um, insecure in my, in my marriage, in my intimacy. I just, he set me free from so much of who I was. You know, I, I started to feel like I was a person again, like I wasn't insecure. I wasn't, you know, all those fears were just starting to shut away. And so, um, yeah, we continued, we continued to come to church ever since. Um, recently we went and did a life class and that brought so much healing to both of us and, and you know, individually. And so that has made my relationship with God so much stronger. I, I feel Him and I know He's there when I pray, when just everything in my life Because if there's one thing that I know I did right was surrendering my family, my husband, and my children. After that, everything has been such a beautiful life that I get to enjoy with God at the center.